seconds and then alchemist is really bad against necrofoil so i think he's out five seconds five seconds but why not can, why can't you just like play a pushing light up like with oh, profit yeah. i i think they shouldn't try to take the game late though yeah and lena can keep that type of momentum going here um you could even think about you know going back for just a, a super hard pusher and run nature's profit position one and then he can start rotating around or even pick a lycan maybe, maybe that that's a kind of a direction that i feel like they could possibly go to Lycan is a hero that uh, the Chinese teams like to pick before, but he hasn't mm -hmm. been picked that much recently. Um, I feel like that's what they want here against the Terra, but you never want to like try to trade farm and <laughs> go into the mid late game against that hero. <laughs> All right, well, it seems like that question is still a little bit unanswered for Vici. Vici They're doing Vici what they can to round to it out. To we have the PL being banned out as the last ban from Thunder. Is there anything else that Vici perhaps is afraid of from Thunder coming out as last pick? Oh, oh. Brood Mother. Are they going to drow? That's oh, banned out first spent. phase. Yeah. They could think about going back for something like the gyrocopter themselves, and then you can like really put the pressure on, like you guys were saying, and try and finish this game off super early. Um, the only thing that you'd really be worried about as far as like the Vichy Gaming Thunder side is something that delays that game. I was first thinking of the PL, but like since it's banned, I think maybe the Lycan, like Winter said, yeah. seems like a good idea. Because Lycan does lose to TV later on the game. Okay. Oh, ah, there you go, the arc water that we talked about briefly. Coming That's out. the call to call matchup against Terrorblade. Uh, if you reach that point, like ultra late game, Art Warden actually outscales Terrorblade because you kind of counter him with the magnetic, uh, magnetic field. So it makes it very hard for the Terrorblade to output damage. Uh, but I've seen Terrorblade, Terrorblade against uh, Art Warden that they go blink. Seconds, they actually just seconds, blink in and try to close the gap and kill uh. him. It's not something that you see too often. Five seconds, five but you have to alter your item build against uh, the Art Warden. I really like PC games line up much more so far. They have a solid lane and then I don't know much about the Arc Warden, but listening to you, it sounds like a better late game as well. All right, do we trust Winter in this, <laughs> in this <laughs> matchup and analysis? We'll find out. I mean, I mean, listen, it's the best of us, so you're putting yourself out there. But we are waiting on that last pick coming in from Thunder. And it looks like Whoa, Magnus, all right. Magnus to round it out. So that's all 10 heroes selected. This is the last game of the day and the fourth and last elimination match here in the first round of the lower bracket. But before we get into game, we actually have a guest over here. It's BSJ to kind of break it down for us. What you got for us, my man? For this draft, I'm going to talk about the concept of space makers and space takers. And I feel like Necro has a lot of weight on his shoulders to open up the space on the map for Terrorblade and Magnus to farm. I feel like there's too much early game pressure coming out from these heroes like Lena and Nature's Prophet, the burst damage, the global presence. And I feel like they're just not going to be able to have enough of the map to farm in order to scale with the Terrorblade into the late game. So I'm favoring Vici Gaming not only because of that, but also Ten because of the fact that, as you mentioned, that the Arc Warden bubble so good against Terrorblade as the game goes on. It doesn't, MKB doesn't work on buildings, so this Terrorblade has no natural way to scale in terms of sieging objectives, and they have no actual gap close for the Arc Warden as he's farming in the early game, and then once the Magnus gets blank, you have the clone to break that apart, and I just feel like the game plan falls together better for Vici than it does for VGJ. Like, they might have a clearer picture, like you said, BHA. We'll find out in this last game. It's one game between these two teams. And to bring you all the action, it is OD Pixel and Fog. Thank you very much, Chobrandy. The last game of the day here at day one of the TIA main stage. And what a game to end it on. It's VGJ Thunder versus Vici Gaming. And what fantastic picks we have here, Fog. I don't know what it is. We've got a Silar Terrorblade. This was something that in the group stages oh, looked yeah. pretty much nigh on unbeatable. Uh, we've we've got a Yang Magnus, we've got a Magnus okay, on happy. one side, we've got a Shaker on the other. These huge two big team fight playmaking heroes. Who have you got to go with here? Who do you feel has come out with a better edge? Ooh, man. The Arc Warden last pick was really, really good for the exact reasons the panel pointed out to progress to that later stage to kind of give them that, that safety net. Things go wrong, we can rely on our Arc Warden in the later stages of the game. It actually also is, it, it can be pretty decent versus Magnus, right? In the fights, you're going to be laying down your spirits, your ghost all over the place, your spark great set is, and it can actually spot out the Magnus and make it it's be a little bit more difficult to I, actually it, set up your pretty spells. I mean, because, as you say, they've got the vision, and they've they've got this silence. Yeah, yeah, every but, time I feel the Magnus is looking for the play, surely a global's going to come out. It, it's yep. going to be hard for Yang to make those big plays. He has to somehow play around the global silence. Can they keep the pressure onto Silar, though? 
I think we got to see, we got to see what, two of, me and you got to do two, I think, Siler Terra Boy he, games, and he, oh. I don't think he died, maybe he died once in no. both of them, he, something like that. You can't give this man space, as you say, he, on his Terra Blade, it, 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 he had some crazy games. He yeah. was just free farm, and then it, it was impossible to play against him. Every team fight, it seemed that Thunder, as a team, were just fantastic at sort of playing around him, making sure that Siler gets the chance to, to find himself in that perfect position and to find those centers, but early on here in game one, See. We are having this movement with this smoke. Ladder. Surrounding him. They'll find the Fisher. Ori in with the Light Strike Array. They've got the follow up. They've got the surrounding. They turn to DDC and take him down. First blood for Paparazzi. And some int for the Silencer. Great start already from Vichy. As they do scout the lanes as well. At least, you know, I mean, it, it was pretty obvious already for Thunder, but now they're confirmed. You know, Terra Blade and Lion are bottom. So they can look to put pressure on that. Lion struggles a bit to actually help in the lane so much, but it is a Terra Blade. So that first meta usage is going to be really important to see what they can do versus 11. But this lane coming out from Vichy, I believe it's going to put a lot of pressure onto the Silar, which is exactly what they need to do. Absolutely. This is the lane that they've got to worry about the most, I feel. You can't let Silar have a good start. And I love the point that BSJ brought up. Is Know, you have to look at how you want to actually take space on the map and who's going to be making your space. Magnus, a hero that traditionally can't really make that space for yourself. They're going to have to do really well in this top matchup so that the Terra Blade can get enabled by the movements coming out from Yang, securing them to like, go for these plays. And we'll see likewise how much pressure Thunder can Radiant put onto Paparazzi's Arc Warden top. top. At the moment, both Fade and Yang are going to be dual laning with a whim. Ranger and Magnus combination. It is a pretty Magnus strong dual lane coming up from Thunder to put pressure onto the Arc Warden is the one thing. You, if you go for a power level one, you can empower your Wind Ranger constantly, and the damage does start to add up, those right clicks. And I'm intrigued to see how the mid lane matchup goes. We have this Necrophos from Freeze being brought to the mid lane, but it's against Ori's Lena, and Ori as, as sort of fire. a mid laner in terms of performances in 1v1s. I mean, this guy, he, he's beaten TAs in straight up 1v1s. He's won matchups that he just shouldn't. He has been that good. But bottom lane, DDC again, a second time. This time in the lane, they find him. 11 in return. One more touch will bring him down. Sila does get it. So they do find the trade down on the bottom lane, one for one. Now that meta is going to be gone, though. It's gone in about three seconds or four seconds just now, and that's when Vici can put that pressure on. Sure, the, the one nice thing about Terra Blade is you've got 12 armor to deal with that harassment from the Treants, but it, it still starts to hurt, especially for EDC. If he walks up too far, quick Fissure Trap, and he is very dead on the Lion. So the mid matchup, yeah, it's a Necro versus the Lina. The Lina has a bit of an edge, of course, from just from range, and you're able to, you, know, you have a bigger mana pool, you can spam your spells, but freeze, of course, on the Necro. You can get your mana back, so it kind of goes back and forth that way. But definitely a Lena favorite one. As bottom, 11. Oh, making a bit of an attempt here with the Hex. You're just trying to make sure that 11 doesn't sort of start to, to find his footing down bottom in terms of being able to keep the pressure on Sala mid lane. Fisher attempted onto Freeze, won't get the block off. So Ori can't follow up with the stun. Freeze will be fine, able to save himself back up. Lanham is just going to be rotating between that bottom and mid lane being a, quite a nuisance as well because they don't they won't see him when he's making the moves because they don't really have they don't have any vision down bottom because looks there was taken out so he does kind of have free reign moving between these two lanes and it could punish the necropods. See the moments on the side lanes, both uh, Paparazzi and Sila seemingly able to farm at the moment. The pressure from each respective dual lane not enough to sort of throw the carries. Off uh, the stride at the moment. A bit of a different duo of supports that we've seen, as you could say, traditionally, is the Lion as well as the Wind A bit different because uh, what they provide is not really team fight. Neither of these two supports give you team fight in the mid game. They're really all about like, the single target control. I mean, line stun is AoE, but in the position that you're in, it's really hard to get any items because it's a five position Lion. But as for getting a multi hero Lion stun, it's pretty unlikely. Both off lane is the moment also finding fun. See both Yang and Eleven. Getting fair bits out of the lane. No one really losing out as it as it were really off the back of this landing stage. Sure the kills as we see uh, are favoring Vici gaming, but it, it's still very close. No one sort of struggling. Everyone's being able to find something in this early stage. We're gonna see Lanham look towards the curve with the enchant zone mint, not quite enough damage. But we'll still be able to get it back to safety. See up top. A little bit of a go on to, to fade as Getting quite a bit of damage here. He's got the low. stick charges. He's going to go for the TP out. And so will not make it. Fenrir and Paparazzi actually have the right click to take him down. Just enough damage. So DC is in a 
tough place, but with the zoning from Siler from the damage, Lanem now has to start to back away. I mean, that top play there from uh, Fader, he did not think the damage would be there. As he TP'd out in the middle of the lane, he could have tried at least to do it behind the trees. But he just showed himself, and that uh, more in for Femre. Yeah, it allows him to help his his board even more with that bottom extra lane. damage. Do get the chase here, the stun into Hex, not quite enough control, and a fish is there from Lanham. In fact, they could look to try and turn as they'll look towards DDC. They're able to corner him in, Chant Totem here comes out from Lanham. And they punch down DDC, both Eleven and Lanham able to keep themselves alive. It's one of the reasons you don't see Lion too much. You can get bullied pretty hard in that laning phase. Particular versus something like a Nature's Prophet who's gonna be in your face that whole time. The rotations from Lanem so far have been perfect for his team. Straight back in bottom, DDC. Eleven's gotta be careful. Pretty low at the moment on this Nature's Prophet. Mm -hmm. It's no meta. The other lane's the moment, Paparazzi. Still second highest on the CS. So still doing uh, very much fine for himself, despite against the aggression of Fade and Yang. Yeah, they've just been playing it straight up as a dual lane. The, the pole was actually blocked by Avicii Thunder, so... Yeah, Fenrir just kind of stood in the lane, sure he sapped some experience, but more than wanted to secure that. We see Yang goes for the bottle, picks up those bounties. Himself, keeps himself, keeps himself nice and full so they can keep that pressure going. The Arc Warden is farming just a little bit better than the time. Seen down bottom, DDC was looking to try and find the wraparound on 11, but Lanham's hot in the case. Just throws a Fisher down to make sure neither of Siler or DDC can get any closer to the Prophets. 11 st still playing around on this bottom lane, very low on both health and mana. The mid lane, Freeze is now going to be, he's got to be careful. So in terms of the matchup, only a slight sort of CS advantage for Ori, but those extra denies have meant that he has hit 6 first. And Freeze has to respect the amount of burst damage that can come out of this Lina if he gets caught out by a stun. Bottom lane. See again the wraparound, DDC, they do find the stun out, onto both of them, the Hex as well, straight up setting up for the kill, onto 11, Lanham trying to chase down DDC with the enchant totem and will find the return kill. Good again. rotation by Fade. And Lanham just, as you say, able to sort of abuse the weakness of the line. DDC gets his skill set out, but then as soon as the Shaker's able to get on top of him, there's not much a line can do. Ori is hasted up, walking down toward bottom, Fade scouts him. And top lane, Yang tries for the CP and it doesn't, oh, he makes it out, but he's going to die to the curse. So that will still be more in for Femre as he got that kill with the curse damage. Paparazzi's feeling very happy now. They know that the Wind Rangers kind of put it oh, look at this man. to move around, but now Lanham again. That's the setup that they needed straight away. Freeze will actually manage to keep himself alive against that Laguna Blade with, uh, I think, must have been pretty much a full wand and the Ghost Shroud. It was actually enough burst heal to outdo the damage of the Laguna Blade. Bottom lane, set up from DDC again. Fade and Salah there as well with a Hex. More than enough time to get those right clicks through as 11 will not get the chance to sprout and hide. Another kill that Silas is able to get himself involved in on this bottom lane. He is 1-0-2 on that Terra Blade. That's a scary looking number if yep. you are Vici Gaming. You cannot let Silas have a good start on this hero. We know that Paparazzi is having just as good a start. Asada's on his Terra Blade. Yep. It's Pap scary. Paparazzi's going for a pretty neat item build that we haven't seen too much on the Oh, the Necro it's Rush. The Necro Rush. I guess because he's versus that Necrophos, so you can get rid of the Ghost Shard at all sure. times. And they want to be playing at a pretty quick pace. I was going to say, yeah. Do so. I like that. I, I guess that they don't really want to take it late against Asada's Terra Blade. As any team will know, especially the Chinese teams, yeah. you don't want to take it late against the Asada's Terra Blade. Even You've got to sort of shut it down. Even if the Arc Warden, you know, you can scale. Like Winter was saying, it's one of the better heroes with the Magnetic Field. But this looks like it's about them going for a timing. Just yeah. trying to take advantage of their split push and their ways to just pressure the map. They have Nature's Prophet, they have Arc Warden. This game could get to a point where it's just like that pressure all over the place. It's all about the rap. Yeah. They even got Lina, which yeah. is a, that's a hero that's great to nuke out those waves, you know, Whoa. shove the waves up. This deep rack brown from Femre and Lanham, hunting for Yang in the tree line. Lanham with the control, enchant into the slaps and a few right clicks. That's going to be more in here for Femre on this bottom lane as Yang cannot hide or escape. That's eight in so far on Femre in eight minutes. Really getting the job done there on his side. It's a 2 0 2 on that top lane. And they're going for the tower. Eleven's joining in. This is exactly what we expect them to do, is look for those tower pushes early on to try to get more map control versus the tower blade. Just play it fast. Yep, play it fast. Radiance and they have vision already of Yang porting in. They have vision of the rotation that was almost coming from DDC since they've got that early vision on the high ground behind the tower. Easy tower for them. Radiance top tower. They really do have to they have to keep the pace up though. If they are gonna go for these sort of builds, this sort of play. They can't allow it to sort of get to that sort of 
closing to, to the 30 minute mark where suddenly Sila will turn up and he will be able to defend these pushes. Bit lane DDC unable to find the stun, they get the shackle shot, but Ori's already behind the towers, they won't look to lead it for more. Lanham does find the Fisher. And DDC just able to get himself around the tip and back up to the high ground, back to safety. Top, they're still pressuring this tower. Paparazzi does not want to give Yang any mercy, but now Fenrir may have stepped up a bit too far as rotations are coming in. See, freeze. Good towards Fenrir. DDC coming in as well. They've got the Reaper Sark down as well as the stun. They'll take him out. He's gone for 15. They're falling low though here as Paparazzi still with that Tempest double doing damage. He'll look towards Yang Yang, able to secure himself back to safety. Now mid also fade. Well, the shackle. Just ruin the combo here for the moment from Ori and will allow Fade to back off. Lanham's there though, looks for the Fisher block off, does find it. They're bringing in Ori and Lemon and do they have the burst of control? Yes, indeed they will, because Fade is blocked up. Maybe they haven't got enough damage. They have a DDC's there with the stun onto Lanham. Lanham trying to hide, but they've got the vision. They'll be able to bring down Lanham. And they find Eleven as well. They've got the stun back up in a second. Looks like Eleven may just be speedy enough to get away, and he is. He's able to get out with the phase boots. Yep. I think Free or Ori got. Ori was just like, I'm so low on mana. As soon as he missed the Dragon Slave, he just started moving away. Lanham, maybe there's a little bit of miscommunication as he's convinced forward. Nice. Dying for it. More and more space for Sarla as he goes uninterrupted on this bottom lane. They've got to just, they pretty much have to be running around as this three-man unit on BGJ Sun right now. They need the Lion, they need the Wind Raider, they need the Necro, because Magnus still needs time before he can be that space creator. We see the Blink is 1,500 gold away for, for Yang, so... He can't really contribute too much to helping his team out while Siler goes for that free farm. And that should be the book one pretty much finished up for Paparazzi. And we'll see where he sort of takes himself with that. If we do see him go straight towards the mid lane or the bottom lane to look to apply that tier one pressure elsewhere. After they have, of course, already taken the tier one top and mid lane. See, Lanham was trying to find some sort of a wraparound, but Thunder keeping themselves backed up. As Vici Gaming now able to push in on mid. We Not see. even needing Prepper routes here at the moment, yep. just with the pressure of the Treants. We see exactly what they want to do. They're like, yep, Tarp, they, they, they can't actually go for these fights too much. They don't have the blink down on the mag. However, Yang is getting a decent wraparound. They want to just... Vici wants to just pressure towers non-stop to be able to hunt this Terrorblade inside that jungle. Swigs are living They find the Shackle shot. On to the Prophet, but now DDC gets turned on. Yang playing around the RP, won't commit it as DDC will get bursted down by a Nature's Wrath. The tower as well will fall as Vici Gaming continuing to, to be able to play at the pace they'd hope to. Nine so for much, five, two towers taken. So much poke and prod. You see DDC wants to walk up to get a stun off, but gets hit by a Dragon Slave, a Fissure, a Curse, a Last Word, as well as some Spark Rates, then a Wrath of Nature on top. There's just so many little damage instances that come out from Vici from such a distance. They have to be careful. In order to take team fights, Thunder, it almost feels like they need Yang's Blink Dagger. Now. They'll do. 1,200 gold towards it. Just looking to find that farm Yang and... and look at look at Vici. They do not wait. Straight down they're block. Like, oh, we're just going to keep looking for the towers. And Don't the, slow down. And they're bringing Paparazzi over this time. He's heading down towards the bottom lane. There will be a double damage range to pick up on the way as well. Azori will grab that into his bottle. Could to continue to play as fast as they can. At the moment, of course, Silai is able to keep up with the gold that they're getting from the towers with the, with the fact that he is farming as quick as he is as him and Paparazzi pretty much even in net worth, despite the fact that Thunder themselves are yet to take any towers. Now look towards mid lane, the TPs are coming in, Lanham ready to hold the defense, leads him with a Fisher on the side, DDC does find the two-man start. Just by the time for Sala to continue to hit into the tier one tower, but now with the curse out, he'll back off. They keep that tier one tower alive for now, VG Gaming. Just outside of the night range as well. Clean that one up later on for Thunder. Paparazzi is, yeah, activated the Necro book and pushing in on this bottom lane. I think, yeah, I think Vici, they know that meta was just used as well, and that's one of the biggest things that Thunder can actually use to, if they want to take a fight, if they want to involve Silent, so they should be looking to be some plays. See, he's found Lanham here with a quick finger. They'll take down the Shaker and look for more. Shackle shot from Fade connects. Can they get DDC in range, though? He's heading straight for Paparazzi, but Paparazzi, as you look towards Fade here with the Spark Rape, not enough to get the damage to get the kill, so Fade's TP will be successful. So Thunder able to at least push Vici Gaming away from trying to take down that tier 2 tower on the bottom lane. But now Fenrir and Ori ready to smoke up. They want to find Siler. That's the most important target for them. It keeping... such a huge kill. Yeah, they're keeping up really well of course, but Siler is still right up there too. Look towards taking down the Tempest double. 
They will get it, but it's a bit of a bait because Ori's now in. The global silence comes out. Now looks to lead him with the Yules. Ori gets the connection. There's the combo. There's the burst. Silas got. The big kill thereafter, they do fine. Sprout from 11 won't catch DDC, so DDC gets out of there. But Silas off the map for still a brief time as we're still in the early stage of the game, only 14 minutes in, but every second counts. Where now Vici Gaming have this small window to be able to push in and know that they've got the safe knowledge that Siler is not farming for a bit of time. Yeah, it was a great movement too, the, the way they set up for the kill. It's not just like any kill, like they did the, you know, the, the Tempest up a little bit, but they also can transition into a tower. And now Sorry. Making quick plays here with the Yules, they're going to commit the Echo Slam for this one. Do they have enough damage? Got the they don't! Round. The Ghost Round's off! They couldn't quite get the damage done, Yang. Does get the skewer. Reaper side down onto Lana, but Lana's still alive. He's gonna back off. The light strike from Ori down onto Yang. Yang's in trouble. The shackle's gonna be set out onto the silence of Femrit. Will not go down, neither will Yang. Yang able to start bottling up. Freeze. Fissured is Arcane Curse, but will not be enough damage as Thunder do get out. Ooh, Only just not quite enough damage there from the combo of VG Gaming to bring down Freeze's Necrophos. They, it looks like they messed up the combo a little bit, right? Because he did not actually get changed that he got the Ghost Shard up because he's got that hood. They weren't able to burst That's through it. That must have been like such split second between the stuns for him yeah. to get. And here we go, though. This is the big timing for Yang. He's got the Blink Dagger. Okay. They've got to try and find something huge with this one. If they can take team fights where Scylla doesn't have to turn up, that's the dream for Thunder. He's just got to keep on farming, at least make sure he has his BKB, which he's going for first after the Dragon Lance, because he, he can feel it. He knows he the pressure's the coming in from yeah. VG Gaming. It is going to get to the point where he has to turn up to the fight, Radiant. despite as much as he wants to keep focusing on farming. He has to be able to deal with just the Yules combo. If he just gets walked up and Yules oh. done, then... Oh, quick They tried for the RP, yeah. but indeed the Yules straight away on to Yang. Yang now being focused, but DDC from the sideline comes in with a wrapper against the two-man stun, setting up Scylla for the double kill. Only Yanks are full at the moment. The shackle shot from Fade comes in as Scylla moves in. There's the Sunder back up to full health. They find a third. They'll lose DDC. But a scary fight for Vici Gaming there because that's Thunder turning up with Scylla and he's now getting involved in the action. That is the, that is the reveal of the Magnus Blink Dagger though. And it only catches the one. Ori was like a split second off from getting him before the RP went off. That could have turned about everything there. But yeah, that double stun DDC. What a wraparound. Getting it on top of Fenrir, so there's no global coming oh, out. The shackle, fade, the power shot, and the urn. He's got to use. Yeah, he's going to be fine. <laughs> Not using his shield set. He did the math. I mean, I guess he did the math. He went down to 7 HP. Oh my goodness, Ori. Really uh, living on the edge there. <laughs> Well, to nine. The nice thing that Vici does have for them is like the, the ticking time bomb is a bit there for Siler. They always will have the Arc Warden to deal with it, but they've also got these three cores that scale really well in the later stages. You know, Nature's Prophet, you can itemize, you can get big Arc Warden and Lina too. You have these mixed damage coming between these three heroes. When you look at Thunders, it is a lot reliant on Siler, but we know that Terribly can be that beast as Vici. They go for this Rose, they know there's no RP. They use the double Necro Book to try to commit for this. No RP for 20 seconds Ooh, on that's Yang. That's killed. Fade drops extremely low because of that. And they can't contest. They're getting away with the Vici Gaming. Thunder There's don't no wish to turn up without the RP. No RP, no meta. Very, very difficult for them to take a fight. Yeah, Levin with the Orchid finished up. Gonna go for that Shadow Blade too. He's gonna be a right-clicking menace as well. An Orchid, incredibly good item versus that Necrophos. Oh yeah, and not just that, also against the Magnus. If they've got yeah. the vision of Yang having the instant silence from Eleven, the instant yules from Ori, the global silence. There's so many things that Yang has to be worried about when he's playing with just the Blink Dagger. Sure, some of these will be sort of avoided when he has the Shadow Blade to get the initiation, and mm -hmm. you'd expect afterwards looking for that BKB. But at the moment, sure, they've got a Blink RP, but it's going to be so hard for Yang to actually get it off in these fights, as we saw in that attempt in the middle lane with the instant yules play from Ori. It's always going to be spared too, because they have to know where Fenrir is. Because if they do try to go for this and a global comes out, it's like, uh oh, yeah, it doesn't matter if the RP. There's going to be no follow-up. Yeah. They have to catch the silencer in type of, type of disable if the RP is coming out. So that has to be some simultaneous initiation. As we see, Fade goes for a blink dagger as well, and that's where we can have that simultaneous initiation from that Wind Ranger as well as the Magnus. I'm talking about blinks. There's now one done on Lanham as well. So another okay, that's problem 
for the Magnus, for Yang, going in for the fights. There's going to be that counter play and mid lane already here, jumping up, but the straightaway turnaround with the Metamorphosis is enough to take the Aegis out of Ori's hands. They're very grouped up though, Thunder. They're moving in, see if they can chase down Ori. BKB is popped by Scylla. Do they have the control to get Ori? Ori's able to use up, dodging that last Metamorphosis. The yeah, there's the power shot. Fade snipes Ori, takes him down. They get the Tempest double as well. It cost them the BKB charge, but they're able to kill Ori twice. They're getting the Aegis and getting him once again. Ooh, he melts when the TB starts to right-click him. I think the Empower might have still been on too, so that extra right-click damage is really significant, up to 300 per hit on Scyther. And just the positioning of that fight, you could see that Bichu was really reluctant to walk into a high ground. It was actually the perfect zone for Thunder to try to go for something. Yeah, it looks like Lanham wasn't really able to get into the neighborhood to look for that jump, because he did just get the blink. But they able to sort of capitalize on the fact that they were as grouped up as they were Thunder. Mm -hmm. Back to less than a 1k difference between the sides. Another close game as it were to end the day here of day one of TI8 group the main event. And now they know, but right now uh, Vici does know Metamorphosis is down. There is an RP to be worried about, but without meta, that's probably their biggest thing that they have to be concerned if they try to take any. Radiant but they are looking to just, they're going to keep farming up it seems. 11, getting closer to that Shadow Blade, Ori is going to be the one that's looking for hunting. Successful scan. Come out on both sides. Self crackles with power. Got these wards down, Peachy Gaming, but... Thunder, seemingly aware and keeping themselves well away from this left side of the map. Look at the paparazzi is really just trying to be a nuisance versus the Magnus, it seems to. Radiant that build is going for a blink dagger on top, so just trying to get into the back lines so they can... I mean, we see that a bit when we see the, the silencer. You want to be able to utilize your global as best as possible, so the blink dagger is one of the best ways. Because global comes out, you get on top of their faces, and you can use the whole duration of it. This smoke play here from Thunder. It's also the blink on... It's a similar concept to uh, blink versus void too, right? Blink versus Magnus. If you're quick, if you have quick fingers, you can get that blink up before the RPM happens. Some you thunder. They have meta up in 20. They're looking for something. Side here. Smoke's gonna wear out. Yeah. He looks to come in, but straight away the global silence. The Orchid comes out. There's nothing to follow that RP as DDC already gets picked up on the back. Lanham echo straight in with the echo. The fishing follow up. He gets the lockdown on silence. Silent puts the BKB, but can't get the Sunder off. They've lost two, they've lost three. They buy back on DDC. Fade's been spread out. Cuts himself out with the power shot, but he's surrounded by the trees. Double kill for 11. They clean up freeze as well as VG Gaming crush the team fight. That's. It's exactly what we're saying. With this Magnus, the jump in instantly counterplayed. A quick global. Not only that, he got orchided as soon as he jumped. The global comes out. And also on the back lines, Freeze was in a perfect spot on the sidelines. Breaks the smoke, sees everything because they have that high ground vision that they placed before that fight started. Oh my and goodness. Just, look at that. You just see all the ulties being used yep. from Michi and they get a perfect fight. And that's one echo. Two minutes in. With this build from Paparazzi, they can put so much pressure on. A full set of racks here taken in the top lane. You really have to command the, the arc ward and build this game. It, it's yeah. just the, been the perfect way to play into this into this Scylla Terra play. You, you can almost tell it with the way that VG Gaming's playing. They had planned for this Scylla Terra play. They knew that Thunder, they always rely on this. They'll pick it up early in the draft because they feel so confident. And to give credit to them, they destroy a lot of teams with it. But VG Gaming, they've turned up with a plan, and so far, that plan's certainly working. Look at how spaced they are. Yang, Yang gets the real one, but gets instantly orchid by Living. Look how everybody was just ready to... And look at Lanham. Lanham gets the perfect jump because that high ground vision, that ward that they have right there, tells them everything that VG Thunder is trying to go for. But Lanham gets, gets the perfect target, and Freeze also makes the fight a pretty much instant four versus five. Look at the wards in that area. They were so prepared for a fight. Dyer's middle tower has been it's only going to get harder for Thunder. Top shrine is under attack. Yeah, I mean, they've got... They, they, that was the reveal. Well, not the reveal, but it was the second usage of Siler's BKB and just unable to do anything. This is why, like, Silencer is one of those heroes that really just crept out of nowhere coming into this tournament. And we're seeing what power it can have in the hands of certain teams. You're in the Radiant's right spot, you just mess up with the entire attack. initiation. You are the perfect counter-initiator. They have to find Fenrir before he gets those globals. They're going to go for those troublesome RP plays. And this is the scary thing, too, is 
if you're playing with a Magnus, you usually as a mag, you don't want to be the first one to jump in. If you do that, that's the situation that you're probably going to see happen a lot of the times. You have to have simultaneous initiation or clear vision of the fight in order to go for those kind of plays as Magnus. And this point as well, Sala pretty much needs his next time before they go for the fight. He's got to get this Manta finished. Yeah. So that he can have some sort of play against the global coming out after he BKBs, as we saw that. Even when he does get the BKB out, very hard to play against so the... At the, just the lockdown they have, the, the stun combination from Lanham being followed up by Ori. He has to get that BKB out early, otherwise there's going to be no chance for him to get a Sunder off in the team fights. Yeah. They bought a gem now on Thunder, so this is one of the key things they need to start doing. Like we're saying, vision is so important in this. They have to be able to see where Vichy is, but they also don't want Vichy to see where they are. So if they can take out some of those wards, it can make the fights a little bit harder. And I think they also, what, they've got... Um, was it just one shadow, two shadow blades already, and I think it's a third one being built Radiant on top for Lanham, so the gem is going to have its uses in that point there. Paparazzi build-wise, queuing up the Hex as his next item after the blink. Hmm. Yeah, well. He knows strike. if he can That's just cool. get on top of Sala in the fight, quick with the Hex. There's very little Thunder can do as a lineup in terms of just keeping Sala alive. It's also one of those, like, it's, it's very instant. The Hex, so if they do see the Magnus, they can just get that off him, on him as well. And like we were talking about too, they, in theory, Vichy should have the vision advantage in most of these fights, because they've got the spark rates all over the place, they've got these trains, so Thunder, they have to have like, simultaneous initi initiation or jumping out of a smoke is probably one of the other. Evans BKB nearly finished. Sila did opt to finish off the Hurricane Pike, in fact, before finishing the Manta style, so still without that when the next fight kicks off. Vichy Gaming, yeah, 9k advantage. They're about to pick up some big items. I think 11 is about to have the full BKB. Lanham is picking up a full Shadow Blade. They're all very content with big... Next items, you see them, they, you know, they, they went back and farmed. But we're not really too... Don't feel like they rush anymore. They got that one Rax advantage. 11 constantly pushing in these lanes. Really hard, like you said earlier, but way earlier. Thunder, they were struggling to hit towers, and it's just going to get harder and harder when they're versus an Arc Lord as well as a Nature's Prophet, constantly pushing out those side lanes. Fade. Dyer's Smart play. Tower. Kills the Thunder DD. Attack. Doesn't want to more than likely die. Bottom lane. Freeze and DDC have to be careful about giving up their position. Tower will go down. Eleven's able to find the deny. No gold. As Freeze and DDC, do they really want to try and make a go on 11? 11 is sort of separated from the team, so it would not be a bad time to make a go, and they do. Straight in, the, the global silence is there, and that gives a chance for 11 to pop the BKB, turn around, and he goes at it with the Orc, and he just takes down DDC. Freeze tries to the TP out, but the fish is there to cancel the TP. VG Gaming now turning their attention towards Freeze. They'll take him as well. They, they couldn't kill 11. They saw a chance, but global silence. Global silence. Femre has had no hesitation this game. Each and every time, the Global's coming out instantly to keep his team safe across the map. Always in the right position. He just oh, doesn't do be anywhere on the map. That <laughs> time, in the other situations, yeah. it's a little harder because you don't want to get by there. But... They're looking to punish here now. Final tier two stands outside for fun. They've got the Shadow Blade on Yang. So you have to be careful with the, sort of the Necro 3 books in place. And as soon as they realize that Shadow Blade's there, you can expect to see Paparazzi just sort of sending the Necro units in to get vision of Yang before he makes the blink play from Invis. He doesn't want to reveal that he has no. this Shadow Blade. He's the one carrying the gem right now. So it looks like they may actually just smoke and try to take a fight while Global's down. That might be their best opportunity. Yeah. Eyes on Lanham. on him. Lanham separated for the team. They don't have to worry about Global Silence, but Lanham, with his own invis, is already making it out of there with his own Shadow Blade. Hard for Thunder to keep tracks on him. Lanham's going to be fine. Haste. I think I was clicking around. I actually think Thunder may have been out of smokes because they just did deliver one. Or they may have not. I guess they didn't have it on anybody. Because they were grouped up looking like they were going to smoke. But now DDC does have it. But those side lanes, they have to be sure to push these out. Whenever they're like this, if you make a smoke play and your lanes are pushing in, it's extremely obvious. Uh, 
This is absolutely going to turn into a game from Thunder. The, the, the question is, can Sidelight carry this game? It's going to be him can versus he carry the world. It? He's got the money for Manta Star now. He's still making very good timing on his items, as you can see. Top net worth, yep. obviously being backed up by that constant in power from Yang. He can farm. Like, if the game goes on, you can expect to see this Terra Blade stay at the top. The problem is, though, the rest of his team will fall behind in comparison to sort of the even spread of farm that VG Gaming's three cores have. And can he take it versus that tricorn? Yang Yang does get the RP, but again, the global silence out straight away. The fish is out on two of them. Yana, Lana walks in, looks for the control onto Magnus, but they don't need it. They find the Laguna. That's going to be Yang gone. The BKP's out for Sila, but he can't find a target. He has to try and retreat some out, but he's been used up. Ori with the setup into the light track right on the side. There's the, the combo. Lana! Lana in with the Echo Slam. Gets them all. Absolutely. Lana! Oh! Just to really rub salt into the wounds there, Lanham cleaning up the team fight with that jump. As all the buybacks in the world. Oh, out. they certainly do, but they're 14k behind now. That was 11 actually ported into the back of the fight as they got the globe off, and he kind of forced all their attention too. So then they all they all clumped as Sila was retreating, and it just set Lanham up for that wonderful echo. Such patience coming from him. But every time, Fenrir. Clicks the R button. So the reason why we're seeing Silence of Favorite so much as the first pick. It just ruins so many sort of ways that teams want to play the game. And as we're seeing, it really does make it impossible for Yang to get his job done. Sure, he gets an RP. They may get a kill off the back of it. But during that time of the Global Silence, there's so much that Vici Gaming can do. And Thunder as a squad, you sort of see them aimlessly wandering around. There's nothing that they can have to throw out apart from popping these early BKBs. As we saw, they can get weighted out and allow Lanham to get in with a big play like that to shut them down. I'll see it again here. It's, Yang. it's just so hard because Yang feels forced to be the first one to jump in every single time, but he can't have the follow-up. So we see there, and you see on the mini-map in the back lines, the TP from the Nature's Prophet comes in. He starts pulling attention from the rest of them as, as Silas tries to retreat. And watch they this from Lanham. Here's the beauty. And they're all very, very close together. Bam. Absolute dream. Fantastic jump from Lanham. As of course he himself, when he jumps in, he doesn't have to worry about any sort of global silence. It's another day in the office there for him. Easy plays and full focus as the game, of course, not over yet. Thunder still in it. But continuing to slip further and further behind. Yeah, looking very hard. I mean, Lanham almost has the same net worth now as the Necrophos. And that's going to almost put them to having four people in the top five net worth of this game. It's a lot of pressure on Silar's shoulder. But Yang's only getting the one heroes in the RPs, yeah. but they don't have someone to start they don't have someone else to show him anything. They don't have someone that's running in and getting him in that getting him in all that information. So he's kinda of jumping in jumping in blind. It's making it really tough for himself. And you can see in that last fight as well, sort of the way that BG Gaming, it feels like they really want to sort of get in the heads of Thunder because they have full vision of Yang stepping up with the Sentry mid before he made the blink. They let him use RP. Yep. They could have easily disabled him before he cast the ultimate, but they wanted to let him do it to bait the rest of the team into feeling the RP. He managed to get it off. We've got to do something. So it really is sort of next level little plays from VG Gaming like this that are making it even harder for Thunder to find a team fight. They've been, I mean, they've been absolutely brilliant on all their counter initiations, like every single time. Fenrir just always in the right place to not get caught next to the lean and not get caught next to any of his cores. And then, yeah, Lanem, of course, also. But these two supports on VG definitely crushing in this game. Thunder, they're just... It's it's looking looking real grim now because the map control is gone. If they want to go for any type of split play, they can start getting picked off very easy because 11 is a monster now in this Nature's Prophet. Oh, yeah. My AC getting closer and closer on VG Gaming. Smokes up and looking to find a catch. DDC on the sidelines. Is he going to be the one to be jumped? Lanham leads it with a fish up. Doesn't find the connection. So DDC's out of there. The smoke will be unsuccessful. As Thunder are able to back themselves up. And away. RP is back up. But Silo at the moment seeing a level 19. Man, that flux cast range is actually so crazy with the talent. The 400 cast range on uh, Arc Warden. He just poked people all the way so far away from him. With that blink dagger too. Combining those, can just easily mess with the back lines. Radiance middle tower has fallen. They finally, do claim that last tier too. Continue to close the map off on him. Wanted to maybe catch Siler, but just. 
but they've got full map control. They're farming enemy jungle, they're farming all three lanes. They've got this tricore to deal with Silar and it's been perfectly. Somehow gotta find a way Thunder to, to have this team fight where Silar can go to work. That's gonna be so hard to do, so it's mid lane. Just trying to deal with the Tempest doubles, getting thrown out by Paparazzi. As it will fall, but not before doing a lot of damage to DC. Bottom lane 11, just leads it straight away with the Orchid onto the Wind Ranger. They the do actually pull themselves away. They're looking towards 11, they want to try and bring him down. 11's got the rest of his teammates coming in, Lannan will drop the fish. As Sala puts the BKB in the Metamorphosis, 11's still alive, they will find him. Shackle shots out, they'll get the Nature's Prophet. So Thunder able to get a kill, and this time. They don't lose heroes, but as we see, still the base. That top lane, they've got to keep taps on it, but that Rack's already gone. At least they forced him to use the cheese. Oh, and they got no, the, the Lion DDC. The oh. heal, or oh, the Wraith, just got to be careful. We'll be fine as the creep does tank it. KB though, we know how important it is for Silar, and it's ticking down, it's down to six. And that was meta expended too, oh. just to kill that, to, well not just to, but to kill the Nature's Prophet. In for the big smoke place. Find, find Ori here. Ori's a big one. Wow, that's a beautiful shackle. They use the global. Can they kill him a second? The team's responds. quite far away from Ori. Well, he's got the BKB. He is going to back off Yang, has got the RP, he'll use it. Tries to hold it on, see if he can get a bigger one, but just the one. That's going to be big enough. Ori's able to use himself up into the air, but there's the stun follow-up. They'll get Ori. A little was the Tempest double too, but that's a couple of big kills back to back. Getting 11, getting Ori. Not just getting Ori, but also again, this is sort of the getting through the Aegis. They're getting these kills, they are able to involve Sylar. They still need a whole lot more though to, to really climb themselves back ahead. They still sit 17,000, 18,000 behind, but certainly sort of glimmers of the chance the Thunder can pull it off. Mm -hmm if they're able to set Silar up for greatness in these fights and, and these pickoffs. Yeah, I'm glad that they were quick on that one, right? The meta was started, the metamorphosis was about to wear off, so they're like, okay, let's try to get a quick, easy pick, and they actually do find pretty much the most important target besides Papara. Gives himself a little bit of signs of life and ways to... time to push out these, these lanes that are constantly being shot inside. And it will get a little scary for, for VG Gaming if Thunder are sort of able to get to this point where they're, they're pushing in with the Terra Blade, because obviously with the build of the Arc Warden, when there's sort of a five-man push coming at you, this build, it's not going to be as strong as sort of the BKB me owner, the, the, the fighting. It's all about the pushing. It's all about playing and applying pressure whilst you're ahead. So if somehow the momentum does really start to shift in favor of Thunder, we could see sort of Paparazzi's build start to start to be punished in a sort of sense. They're, they're going for a cool approach, though. I, I click on the Lina, I saw Aghanim is queued up, and then I click on the Arc Warden, and I see Dag and Five queued up. So they're looking to just zap down this Terra Blade. That's a pretty cool way to deal with it. Yeah, I, I, yeah. The Laguna again. The Agonim's Laguna against the Terra Blade, as you say, with the pure damage. That's going to be nice. And they That's know the BKB is. is extremely low already yeah. too. So they've got more than enough control. If they can burst them down with those Dagons with the double Dagon five coming out from an Arc Warden. Damage. So there we go. Agonim's on Ori. Agonim's also picked up by Lanham on the Shaker. We do have the blink for DDC. So. We DDC's now sort of have this this okay. other way that Thunder can start the fights without their Magnus going in. Yeah, it's really important. Now they've got, we I mean, now they've kind of got three if they can possibly have Fade also jump. So, yeah, Vision still will be a bit of a problem though for them. Farming from Rosh. We'll find out in about 45 seconds. Dyer's middle tower. Pressure on all the lanes. Trying to make Fichi okay, split up around the map so they can get those picks. They're not, they're not going to split up. See down bottom. Yang's constantly just shadow blading staying off the map so he can look for opportunity. We're getting close to 11, but 11. He's well away from the creep wave and already Yang Priest that's seeping back to to prepare for any sort of siege that may come in on the middle lane. Smoke picked up by Yang. I said they want to try and make another smoke play, but as you say, with sort of the map control that Vici Gaming have over Thunder's half of the map, it's very hard for, for Thunder to sort of leave the map and leave their base and, and look for those smoke plays without it being too obvious. 
Walk up the tiger with the item. They do find that. Straight away with the Shackle, the Global Silence does come out, but he's already got the Metamorphosis off Silo. Is it enough damage to find that? He forces himself forward, but he hit the Slam is only going to win the Shadow Blade. He goes to the Yak, drop it, he gets the RP on Ori. Ori's down. Top RP there from Yang. It's not a flashy one, but it gets the job done. He gets on Ori, they take the Lina out of the fight, now they're looking for more. Fade tries with the Shackle. Doesn't connect, Eleven will be able to walk off. But there, again, we're sort of seeing the, the pickoffs that they need. It doesn't matter if it's just one in the RP. If it's one of the cores, they know it's going to stop Vici Gaming for, from looking to fight. And Paparazzi. Oh, he's got the lead in. Fade blinks in, gets the shackle. Can they bring the rest in in time? Yes, they can. Reaper Scythe as well. Paparazzi dead for a 110 seconds. And let's look at that Roche timer. Oh, 10 seconds. Thunder making the clutch plays when everything is against them. I was going to say that Fate's buyback may not have been worth it because he couldn't actually find any follow catch-up, but there it we pays go. off. He finds... Now, if they the can map. find Roche, that'll be the other question. I mean, they, obviously, Paparazzi can buy back. It is up. If he feels the need to head over and contest this, they're still without Ori for 20 seconds. 11, getting quick on the split push pressure, and bam, there it is. As they soon know. as they know they're in the pit, Paparazzi's back in the game. Yeah, they've got that ward vision outside, so they see them walk in, and Paparazzi has to... Has to go for that buyback because Yang is stalking 11. He's 11. The skewer lead in straight back, but oh, did he see? Did he see? I mean, did he DC? I mean, he didn't press X. He didn't press anything. That and now 11 gets out. I, maybe uh, that looked weird. Miscommunication. I guess DDC, a different part of the map. DDC wasn't looking. I'm not too sure. That was a bit of a mistake there. That was a skewer into the easiest hex of DDC's life. Mm -hmm. Huh? An easy off that they should have gotten. Yeah, they absolutely should have got that. Uh, there, there's no excuses for that one. As that is now Roshan for Vici Gaming. That's a refresher shard for Lanim. We saw what he was able to do with one Echo Slam. We'll see what he could do with two. The seeds are for us. Is that yeah, that little pickle? May, maybe not too costly, but it's you got to keep your cool. Who they give everything to? Aegis is on Ori as well as the cheese. Can actually, give Paparazzi anything. As he switched his build as well on Paparazzi. Queued up the Thero Blade instead of the Dagons. I was so excited to see double Dagon 5. Uh, double E Blade's just double as e Blade's yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's probably, also good. It's, it's probably the safer choice I as well. It's arguably right? more useful. Yeah. yeah, it adds to sort of the push in terms of right click. You can save your it's, teammates, it's you can save yourself. Save. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's just the smarter build. I won't be surprised if, if it goes well, we'll get the Dagon after the E Blade. We're going to see yep. them lead out of the base Ooh. here, look to jump forward, but immediately with a blink of the Shadow Blade, Ori gets out. That was quick by Lanham. Jumps himself away from Freeze's Shiva's got. We have Siler has 6,600 gold. He's on top of that net worth by quite a bit now. I mean, what's he thinking about? What's he getting? Does, he, need to, does he stat up or does he go full offensive? Stats are usually really good when you have the Magnus, but he could also look for something like that. Oh, he's a little squishy though. That Alina Agnes is the thing that maybe wants him to stat up. Well, I was going to say, because of Alina Agnes, is there not just a temptation for him to get a Lincoln Swing? Not much else procs it. If he's got, if he BKBs, if he BKBs, if he BKBs yeah, there's nothing else to proc. He's not going to get zapped. But well, we'll see. And you're, you're bang on it. There you yeah. go. There we go. He's, he's a smart man. After. He's a smart man. Yeah, he's following my iron builds. That's probably not the best of stuff, but we'll see how it works out for him. With this Aegis, with this cheese. Yang. Stop getting Yang. He tries to go back. Oh, but there's the Yules. There's the stun. He just get forced back. Can they get Yang back to safety? Eleven comes in, looks for the silence on the DDC. DDC is still alive for now, but they're losing that Yang. And Yang. the gem drops on the deck, too. Yang does have buyback. He's gone for 70. Lanim is pretty low on mana as the Earth is shaking up. So is Ori. Paparazzi switch back to them. Oh, they do. Okay. Oh. The jump forward, the hex. Okay, they, they got the global silence out of them. Silas actually leading straight in. He's looking towards Fenrir. Fenrir's able to get up to the high ground. That's the BKB. As long as they can sort of get back, Thunder, this isn't too bad because they've made them use global silence. They will buy back on Yang, and that will also force Vichy Gaming to back off. I mean, the fear is, though, you used, they used global, but there was also a metamorphosis used as well as that BKB. So it's down to five seconds. Maybe have been down to five seconds anyway before that, but... Now they know that they're going to have a pretty big timing window in about 20 seconds to look for something. Even though they don't have the global, they still got this Earthshaker with double echo. They do. Double full combo. 
Silo. Needs to spend his money. He's still got that 8k. He's, he's got enough uh, for the full Lincolns and buyback. Yep. Yang he's, has to be so careful right now head over. his positioning. If he dies, they are in so much trouble. There we go. Lincoln's finished. He's got it. Meta does end. For that push. They smoke up. They're gonna look for a catch off of it. Have to watch out. Yang has to be so careful. I know there's no metamorph, so he's got to hit a big RP and there is a chance to do so. No global silence. Bishop. That's a freeze. Up. Ori, look at the combo. Pat Prassy sends the Tempest double in. They won't find the control, but they do get the burst on DDC. DDC's oh. gone. Already the rack starting to be beat upon by the Tempest double. Ori has used the BKB. Large strike array down. There's the jump forward. Can he get the shack of the card? Instant a hex. Onto Fade. There'll be a buyback with DDC. Sila heads to the middle. Yeah, oh no! He whips anyone. it! Doesn't grab anyone! Silas gotta be careful now, the BKB is worn off, the Linkers has been propped, he can set up the force for Ladam in with the slap on top of Sila, Sila getting control of the look Yang! Sila gets himself onto the side, but Yang have faded down, they get the Reaper side down onto Ladam, but Ladam bites back immediately! Only three alive on Thunder, can they hold oh, the jump in from Paparazzi, Tempest double with the Hex, the Ori's going in deep, Ori loses the Aegis, but DDC gets taken down, there's a dieback on the Lion, Beachy Gaming taking another set of racks here on this bottom lane, the as they get the control, the stun, Ori with the zap, there'll be a buyback from Freeze, but they've lost the bottom lane of racks. Lanham has another Echo, he's used the Refresher Shard, he's prepared, he's only for a jump. Freeze and Silo are alive to try and defend this. Freeze trying to go for Femre, Femre getting low, Femre will fall. But now Freeze, he has to be careful, Eleven actually getting beaten down by Silas. Silas is in for Eleven, there's a slam again! Ladam straight in, looking for the angle, Silas still alive for now, can he get a center off, he can't, Silas down! Freeze as well, he'll get first, it's Silas by his back! But it's just Silas! It's just Silas! 20 seconds until Lion's back in, 20 seconds before Fade's back in, Silas getting jumped upon, Silas getting the BKB for the global, after the BKB, meaning no Sunder for Silas! Oh GG God. is called as Vici Gaming take down Thunder and knock Thunder out of the competition. Vici Gaming will move forward and boy did they deserve